What's up guys? Welcome back to Supreme Micah. So in this upload, what I want to talk about is carbs. What exactly is carbs? So there's two things that I want to talk about. How can you maintain your muscle? And also, what is glycogen? So, okay, now on a daily basis in regards to carbs, you're going to have to consume carbs. Consuming carbs is something that you need overall for energy. So depending on if you are low in carbs or not will dictate whether or not you can actually keep your weight on such as muscle mass. That will actually help fuel the amount of muscle that can help it grow and also maintain over a course of weeks or months. Okay, so now let's get to glycogen. So what exactly is that? Okay, so when your body stores carbs after you consume them, what happens is it stores it and then it turns it into glucose. And what exactly is glucose? It's used for energy. So that turns into glycogen as a form of sugar by the muscles. So this all helps to form energy that's actually stored within your muscles. Okay, so if you're listening to this, you're probably like, okay, enough. How much carbs do I need to consume to be able to get the muscles that I want? Where is the trick? Where's the magic formula to be able to tell me how much carbs I need? All right, so this is extremely important. Depending on your body weight, you're going to need to consume between 2.5 or 5.5 grams of carbs depending on your body weight so that's really important so you may be a bigger guy or you may be a smaller guy and depending on that size you may have to consume differently compared to others some people may have to consume carbs at a higher level versus a lower level just depending on your weight a lot of that has to go into your size, such as how tall you are, and if you're just overall a heavy guy and girl. So sometimes that tends to be the determination. Okay, so rest is also important in regards to building muscle. Not only is it carbs, not only is it being able to have the right amount of energy for your body, but also simple rest. I've mentioned this in previous videos that I've uploaded and I'll leave a link here for you to be able to see. Guys, when you're sleeping, your growth hormones, GH, is at its most active and this is where the magic happens. This is where the science happens, okay? This is where your muscles are able to repair themselves at their best. So that's why it's actually very important even after training very hard and being able to meet those goals and eating like how you should, you also have to rest. Okay, so far we've gone over what is glycogen, we've also gone over carbs, and we've also gone over sleep, rest. These are essential to being able to grow muscle. Now I want to talk about protein. Protein is also important and it's also one of the most important factors in regards to gaining muscle. So one of the topics that I want to talk about with protein is how much should you be consuming? One thing that is a fact you need to be consuming as much as you weigh. If you weigh 185 pounds, you should also consume the same amount of protein. A lot of this should be consumed by what you're eating such as meats. Meats also have amino acids, and I've also spoken about this in a previous video, which you can also go check out. I'll leave the link to the amino acids video that I created within the description of this video. So amino acids overall helps rebuild your muscles after a workout. So while you're in the gym, what happens is your muscles will break down and I've spoken about this in some of my previous videos. So what happens is that needs to be actually recovered. And one of the things that help your muscles recover and grow is protein. And that protein has amino acids. That's why it's extremely important to be able to consume protein and enough protein because it's a huge factor in being able to rebuild your muscle and grow it. Now, I really want to talk about protein a lot further in other content, but I will talk about a few more details right now. 
One of the things that you should know is that when you're also attempting to gain muscle, that you need to consume more calories than what you are probably now. So if you're consuming 1,200 calories or 1,300 calories, you need to be consuming more over time, and that really depends on how much you weigh currently, what your goals are, okay, and how much muscle you want. That all factors into this. So something else that you should keep in mind too is that a lot of the time when people want to gain muscle, they really have no set goal. And my advice is to set a goal for exactly what you want. And the reasoning why I'm saying that is because when you're balking trying to gain muscle will probably lead to other factors and I'm no one to assume anything but if you're at a surplus of calories for a year and you don't bring that down then what happens is you're probably going to generate a lot more fat than you intended now I'm going to touch base on this in other videos but you absolutely need fat in order to gain muscle but there's also at times throughout the year to be able to cut it and just bring it down a little bit. You do not have to consistently eat large amounts of calories throughout the year. Now this also depends on what your goals are. If you are a strength trainer, if you're someone who is powerlifting, if you are into any of those categories, then that may be something that you need to do. By all means, eat. But I'm talking to those people out there who are attempting to just be not average, but they want more muscle. And by that, I mean they're probably an average gym goer, someone who really likes the gym, but they don't want to compete. They're not interested in powerlifting. They just want the looks. They want to look good. They want to feel good. And that is is what I'm talking to. That's who I'm talking to right now. So those are the people that need to be listening to this. In regards to what you want out of a physique, no matter who you are, you're going to have to cut your calories sometime. And that is for a lot of different people. So just make sure you know exactly what you want. Once you know what you want, what your goals are, you'll be able to figure that out yourself. You can bulk for three months straight and then after the three months when you've been able to gain that amount of mass, you can then cut and that's actually when your muscles will be the most visible. And in regards to someone who is attempting to achieve a more toned, invisible muscle look, then being able to bulk, increasing the amount of calories that you're eating to be able to build that muscle will only help. But remember, the longer you're bulking, the more your fat containment will actually increase. So just remember, continuing to bulk on a high surplus amount of calories for a certain amount of time or an extended amount of time will only increase the amount of fat that you have if not brought down or monitored or if you're setting a goal to be able to establish whatever you want. Just keep in mind that you need a game plan. You need an end way and you need a way out. So one of the next topics that I want to talk about is in regards to hypertrophy. Hypertrophy is really important and it's in regards to being able to build bigger cells. When you're in the gym, you need to lift heavier. This goes in regards to building bigger muscles, okay? When you're in the gym, you don't need to lift extremely heavy. And once again, this plays into whatever your goals are. If you're strength training or if you're powerlifting, if you're in competitions, it really depends on whatever you're trying to do. But if you're trying to gain muscle, you don't need to lift the heaviest weight in the room. You do not, okay? You need to lift a medium-sized weight 
for an extended amount of time and it all goes into the amount of reps and sets that you're doing and this has to be consistent it's best to do it over time and this goes back into creating a game plan in regards to what you want if you're trying to build a muscle okay over let's say six months which is a standard of someone trying to build muscle what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to say okay well i want to gain let's say five to ten pounds and i want the ten pounds to be at least let's say four or five pounds of muscle. And, and this is just hypothetically speaking, okay? Because as I mentioned before, in order to gain muscle, you actually have to gain fat. Gaining 10 pounds of muscle is possible, but you're probably gonna gain fat within that time. So going back to what I mentioned before, if you're setting a goal and you're increasing your calories, you're at a surplus in how much you're eating, you're likely going to be able to hit that goal, especially if you're just starting from the beginning and you're like, okay, well, I'm going to increase my weight gradually. As I increase my weight, I'm also going to increase the amount of calories that I'm eating. So within six months of a span, what you're going to want to do is gradually increase your weight. Start with something not too heavy, but something that is generally a medium sized weight and then work your way up there. And as I mentioned before, it does not have to be the heaviest weight in the room. You can absolutely gain muscle without having to squat 315 or having to deadlift 315. It's very possible, okay? And if you are doing that and you're doing it for specific reasons, then that's great. I'm speaking to other people out there who is listening to this. So another thing that I want to talk about too is deciding on what carbs to eat. There's people out there who balk in different ways and they decide to be able to gain muscle in all different type of methods and ways, which is pretty interesting, okay? But one of the things that I really want to talk about that people should pay attention to is good carbs versus bad carbs. Now, I personally do not eat bread, okay? I don't eat white bread, and if I do eat bread, it's Ezekiel bread. These are my carbs recommendations. I'm just going to go over a few, okay? So for good carbs, try to aim for veggies or sweet potatoes. Potatoes. Now, stay away from bad carbs. Bad carbs would be anything such as bread, as I mentioned before, uh, white bread, candy, sugar, those type of things, uh, especially sugar. You don't want to consume sugary drinks and candy and things like that because sugar is nothing but fat. It turns into fat. So I want to go over some of the good carbs and the bad carbs. Now, as I mentioned before, bad carbs, stay away from white bread, stay away from sugar. These are things that you do not want. It only affect your fitness goals overall in a bad way. Now, things that you do want to consume, healthy carbs, would be sweet potatoes or veggies, for an example. Now, this is something that I want to talk about. I'm not going to get too thoroughly into it. I want to save this for future videos and content. Veggies are carbs. So the thing about veggies is that Veggies only have so much carbs in it, and a lot of the carbs that you can get from other places would be that of rice, right? Depending on the type of rice that you're eating, whether if it is, let's say, white rice, brown rice, there's a lot of different type of rice out there. Those type of carbs essentially are great, and you don't have to consume a lot of rice to be able to have a great amount of calories consumed. Whereas when you're eating things like broccoli and squash, you have to consume so much of that vegetable just to get a great amount of carbs. What you want to do, what you want to aim for is looking for carbs that are good, but also are great in regards to the amount of carbs that it has in it. So if you're looking at sweet potatoes, for an example, or if you're looking at other veggies that are high in carbs, then aim for those type of carbs, okay? Guys, as always, I appreciate you for tuning into this channel. Please make sure that you hit the thumbs up button, make sure that you leave a comment, and also subscribe, and I'll see you next time.